we've arrived at the magnificent flowing Mara River, which is the in at this particular place. And we've got a combination of rocks and moving rocks. And they just keep the rocks just deep enough to hide a boat. How crazy is that? In my imagination, that was a sort of a rocky point where it was shallow and the river was just swimming over it, but then that entire hippo just vanished in there. Shame, that thing is poor Benjamin trying to cross there. Maybe I've, maybe I've gone off on my side. I have gone off on my side. Alice, Alice, you'll have to link away. My batteries have died. Oh, I've got more. Right. Okay. All right, let's go from one river to another. We'll see you shortly. Okay, let's try that again, shall we? After our disastrous initial attempt at this Mara River crossing. What I was trying to say, apparently very softly, was th just how surprised I was at how deep that rocky pool was. I really thought that was a shallow patch of water. It looks like a shallow patch of water. But there we go, a pile of living rocks and a pile of, well, not living rocks. A hippopod all clustered together every now oh there's a baby there's a tiny tiny baby at the back there and this is a spot that we're going to be visiting very frequently over the coming weeks especially when the migration actually gets here don't know where they are we haven't been down that way in a while no baby come back so we'll be able to observe this pod of hippos as they experience the migration and probably basically just find it a little bit of an annoyance. What I have been looking for is a big territorial crocodile. There's, in theory, one pretty much at every crossing point. I haven't found it, though. I thought I saw it, but I can't be certain. It could just be lurking in the water somewhere. I mean, desperately trying to get pictures of the various crocodiles at the various crossings. So if it would pop out right now, that would be marvellous. It's a nice morning to be out. There's a, the, the sun is really beautifully warm and then the wind is quite cooling. So it's a really nice, pleasant temperature to experience. And this peaceful scene in front of us, and it really is very peaceful at the moment, is going to be completely transformed shortly. Is that the little one? struggling, a different one, struggling to get on top of one of the other hippos. Life's tough when you're that tiny and everyone around you is massive. Especially if you can't stand at the bottom, you've got to find yourself a good place so you can go to sleep. Here we go, is that more comfortable? No, not quite. <laughs> We're so sleepy. Far too young to have any tusks just yet. Come on, you can do it. Go and lie on your mum's back. That's the way. Up you go. Up you go. <laughs> mum's the perfect resting place. Oh dear, this isn't working out as well as you had planned, has it? Just to get that position so it doesn't slide off while it sleeps. Now, Smack, you want to know if these hippos are trying to stay warm. That could be. I don't think they're too bothered by the cold, but I think there's a possibility that they're in the shallows there and enjoying the warmth of the sunlight on their backs. Hippos do like to sunbathe, as sensitive as their skin is to the sun, especially on cooler days. They like to be out of the water. They like to go and lie up on the banks and spend a bit of time out of water. So it's entirely possible they're enjoying basking a little bit before moving further into the shallows as the sun gets stronger. I know that
that it's much warmer here than it is on Juma. Let's head back to Taylor with creatures that are also basking in the morning light.